if you thought King Cotton had hung up its crown and long since left the Northwest, think again. We're actually bringing cotton yarn spinning back to a cotton mill that was built in the 1800s. Now, originally, this used to have about 44,000 spindles and up to 600 people working here. It's 70 years since this mill in Duckenfield spun cotton, but six million pounds of investment have made this the only company spinning in the UK. This is cotton lint straight from the ginnery. So straight from the field, they take out all the seed in the ginnering process. It still has some trash with inside it. Some of that trash, maybe little bits of seed. It might be some of the earth itself. It's still a natural raw commodity that we need to clean. Once hundreds were needed to run these machines, now it's just a handful. My mum worked in the mill weaving, my dad worked in the mill weaving and my grandfather did. More or less all the mills around here had cotton in, you could walk out of one job into another and you can't do that anymore. Christine's third generation spinner, it's a trade she thought was all but dead. Now it's her role to train the new recruits and soon there'll be 100 new jobs. It's not like it used to be in the olden days. Less manpower, more high-tech machinery, don't need as many people to do the job and it's the quality that we're working with. When Manhar arrived here from India in 1978, the industry was still booming. It was uh, very dusty, noisy, a lot of uh, uh, manpower required a lot of hard labouring. We are excited because we're part of this uh, team that we're bringing cotton industry back to uh, uh, Britain. And uh, I think, I always say to everybody that industry come back to home. <laughs> this is some of the finest cotton yarn that money can buy and it's unique because it's British. But the story doesn't end here. Well, the yarn comes in from the spinner, it's delivered to us through our warehouse. We load the yarn into a, a large stand here, we call a creel, put about 500 cones up in the creel, and then we take the, uh, the yarn from the 500 cones that we've got here and wind it onto the warp, and then the, uh, the warp we then take into the weaving shed, and uh, that's where the magic happens. David's a survivor in the truest sense. His family have been weaving in Burnley since the 1870s. I'm hoping really that we can be here at a, a kind of new rebirth of the, uh, of the industry. You know, for nearly 30 years, we've un been unable to buy yarn from the UK. And, you know, we sell our fabric as being a UK product, but we haven't been able to buy a UK yarn. So to be able to buy something that's made in England and sell a truly English product is, is fantastic. And at one stage, there were 100,000 looms weaving in this town. Now, there are just 30, and they are all here. There's a really di different atmosphere now, and uh, you know, we're really excited to be part of, uh, of something that we hope is going to grow again. sense of identity that these, that these factories and these industries brought to these towns. These were towns that grew up on the cotton industry, you know, stretching back generations. Families have been involved in the cotton textile and garment industry. And I think it plays an important part in civic identity. You know, these are towns that, you know, their whole, their whole sense of being is centred around these trades. And if these trades disappear, we lose a sense of who we are in these communities. This is Community Clothing, and that is Patrick Grant. You might know him from BBC Two's Sewing Bee. What is the Godet going to do for the back of this cape? It's going to add a feature. Why does it need a feature on the back? I think when you're walking away, you need a feature. <laughs> okay. Make an right, impression. Make an yeah. impression as you walk away. Patrick's in Blackburn for the launch of his first Community Clothing shop. These clothes are stitched down the road from here, and the aim is to use textile factory downtime to make his garments. By doing that, we can sustain and hopefully create many hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs in the, the clothing industry here, both in the, you know, in Pennine, Lancashire, and also in other parts of the kind of former industrial Midlands, north of England and, and south Scotland. So from raw cotton to yarn, to the weavers and onto the high street, could King Cotton be back to reclaim his crown? Perhaps, but the market for quality made in Britain is growing and that can only be good news for this region. Matt O'Donoghue, ITV News, Blackburn.